Well, hello again, and uh, welcome to the VK6CS Amateur Radio Channel. Right, eh? Now, uh, just, a, just a couple of quick things. This place is a little messy. This is a uh, this is a vacuum cleaner. I've had it for some time, and these things are very good for clearing up a very untidy workbench or you know, work table in my case. It's a vacuum and sucks all the debris into the vacuum cleaner. Very good for cleaning your workspace. Now, in here, in this little box here, I have a vacuum capacitor which is absolutely useless for cleaning your work area. They are very good, however, for tuning magnetic loop antennas because they have instead of air between the plates they have a vacuum they have a vacuum dielectric in vacuum capacitors and what is what is a dielectric well a dielectric is an insulator that will allow voltage to be polarized across it i know that because i looked it up right now um, I don't know if you've seen the previous videos where we've got the little homemade mag loop uh, basically hanging off a guy wire on a commercial delta loop or hanging off a tree. Uh, I don't know if I've filmed it hanging off a tree. Anyway, at the apex it looks like a diamond. It actually looks like a diamond when it's, when it's um, hanging up. There's a little toroid at the bottom which is where the drive goes in. At the top there's a little grey ABS box. A little bit smaller than this one. It's got a knob on it because it's got a small air, airspace capacitor inside the box. And it's been fine um, using the FT817, no problem at all, because it's only five watts. And although with these mag loop antennas, you do get very high voltages at them, where the capacitor is at the, at the apex, um, the small air, airspace capacitor can handle the voltage produced when you're driving that uh, antenna with five watts from an FT817. Now, we wanted to, uh, I say we, because I'm talking about myself and someone else that generally does this portable stuff, um, wanted to try driving uh, an FT-857 into the mag loop, but the capacitor wouldn't take it. So I thought, okay, well I'll get a vacuum cap and I'll put it inside an ABS box and then because the, the way it's constructed is the small ABS box with the airspace capacitor and it's got a BNC socket on either side. So you take the, take the RG58 coax out, which is all scrunched up in a travel bag, assemble it into a, a, the diamond shape, you have a few dowels going across with some retic pipe, across the middle so it looks like a diamond and that goes at the top and you put your BNC on there and on there tune the uh, knob and away you go so I thought okay I'll make a uh, slightly larger one so what I've done is I've got a vacuum cap in this box I'll show you in a sec um, this is a uh, grunt very strong I think it's two or three millimeter diameter uh, rope I don't know what it's quite what it's made of but it's very good stuff it's camouflage too so uh, be very careful where you put it because you might not be able to find it. And that basically would hang up like that. This would go over a tree and the bulldog clip would just hold it like that. So it would hold, it's not much weight in the loop, it would just hold position like that. Or if it's a particularly tall tree and there's a small branch, that would just clip on the branch. Okay, time to look at the vacuum cap. Now, as you can tell, this doesn't make anywhere near the sort of noise that the vacuum cleaner makes. That's because there's no motor in it. Okay, now where are we? Now because I've tied the tied little uh, thing around here, and because it's got a, a lip on that, I can't actually unhinge the uh, the box and show it to you. 
or you know, open the box using the hinge. Um, the unhinged part comes in with my uh, um, personality. Okay. All my personality disorder. There we are. What's wrong with being a narcissistic psychopath? That's any problem with that at all. Well, should be able to just prise that over there. There we go, made a little mark on the box, but it doesn't matter. It's going to be used out in the bush for really fairly rugged stuff. Okay, so inside that box is a vacuum capacitor. This one's rated at 250 picofarads and 5,000 volt peak, 3,000 volt uh, AC RMS. So, you know, we're not a I'm not a broadcasting station. I'm only going to be using it for SSB to tune a loop. So, 5,000 volt peak working is uh, is fine. Uh, for this uh, for this particular device, I if I can actually zoom in on that and show that to you a little better, um, hmm, will it stand? Will it stand like that? It might actually. I might prop it up with that. There we go. I'll just zoom in on that so you can see it better. And there we go. You can see the vacuum cap mounted inside the uh, inside the small ABS box, and um, there's just some fairly thick copper wires there going to what would be the outer on the BNC sockets. I know with mag loops, it's all supposed to be welded. You know, that low radiation resistance, so they're very high current circulating in them. But um, this is just uh, this is just an experiment, just to see if it works. So. Um, you know, it's um, it's not a work of art, but um, it's it's going to be good enough to let us run the FT857 into the existing loop. I might even make up another loop over the weekend, um, but uh, I'll see how it goes anyway. But at least I've got the capacitor there, so I can um, I, I, I can connect the 857 to the loop and uh, and tune it without worrying about the uh, the tuning capacitor bursting into flames. Okay, so that's a uh, that's a vacuum capacitor. Now, just for comparison, I'll show you a similar rating on an air-spaced capacitor. Now, remember this is 250 puff. It's rated at 5,000 volts peak, 3,000 volts RMS. Um, let's get that out of the way. Back in business, good as new. Never know it been opened up. Okay, um, just clip that on there. Put that over there, out of the way. Now I have shown you this old ATU of mine before, and I'll show it to you again, simply because it's got a similar. It's got a capacitor in there with a similar rating, but you can see that you'll be able to see the difference in size. this for some time and this is I had these capacitors and I was going to use these capacitors for something else but I ended up putting them in this box and uh, just sort of codging this together basically just to use it um, for uh, amateur radio um, if you saw the previous video you'll go wait a minute that, he was going to use that ATU next to his radio in the shack and you're absolutely right I was the reason for that being I didn't have an automatic ATU and I wasn't going to go running out in the garden. Okay, now, this capacitor here, this nice airspace capacitor, as you can see I've got a stainless steel pencil there, that will fit down between the veins, well not entirely actually, about halfway, so you can see the spacing on that. I'll zoom in on that so you can see the spacing better. But this is rated at 3 kilowatts. Um, or was it 3kV? I can't remember now. I got it from... Ah, oh, of course the little plate is on the back of it that tells you what the rating is. Uh, made in Great Britain. Well, made in Britain. They probably saw the way the country's going. Alright, well, uh, okay. So, you can see the size of this capacitor. So it's 250 puff. That's 250 puff. 
and you can see that's quite a bit larger than the um, than the vacuum capacitor, and that's because this is, this uses air as its uh, as its dielectric. There we are. Okay. So this one, I think, is um, as I say, I think this is rated to it's either three it's either three kilowatts or um, three thousand volts RMS. So if it's three thousand volts RMS, that'd be five thousand volt peak probably. So it's a very very similar rating, if not an identical rating, to the um, uh, to the vacuum cap. But as you can see, it's considerably larger. So this is two capacitors on one shaft because uh, this is an SPC transmatch, you might remember previously I've discussed those, SPC means series uh, parallel capac capacitance. So this capacitor in series, this capacitor is in series, this capacitor is in parallel with that that roller inductor. So it's very much like a T-match, if you can imagine on the output there's another variable capacitor going to ground, um, that's that one. The other one that's uh, in, in series with the output, both on the same shaft, and uh, the idea being that um, as you uh, as you tune for a good match through, um, one half of this capacitor shunts any any frequencies outside of the frequency you're interested in, interested in even. I get my teeth sorted out one of these days uh, to ground. So I hope you uh, I hope you can see that okay. Um, so I might just zoom in on that. Just give me a better look at that airspace capacitor. And if I was going to use this stuff for high power, if I ever get around to making a high power amp, then I'll change the wiring in here and I'll put something a bit, uh, a little bit more suitable for high power. So the wiring really doesn't, uh, doesn't, um, doesn't really belong with the uh, these particular capacitors. But uh, as I say, it was only a fudged up thing for ham radio. Uh, all right, maybe that'll do. Let's see. Get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. How does that look? Oh yeah, you got a pretty good view of that. Oops. Yeah, pretty good view of that. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the difference between in, in physical size and uh, the actual arrangement uh, between uh, a, an air-spaced variable capacitor and a a uh, vacuum variable capacitor, and um, on a on a looking on a circuit diagram, they would both have the same symbol, which is a capacitor, with an arrow through it, showing that you can vary the capacitance. Um, that uh, that capacitor at the other end is a 500 puff. That was only supposed to be 250 puff, but um, instead of having it halfway open when I start the tuning, I have it 25% uh, of the way open because I bought that. And um, there was another capacitor that I showed you in a previous one, which was I said was 1500 puff. It's the same physical size as these, same physical size, got more plates. That was uh, actually a thousand puff, not not a 1500. And uh, this um, this 500 puff here, and um, that 1000 puff were going to be used in a medium wave um, transmitter tank circuit, but ended up using them for uh, amateur radio instead. And uh, adding this one here just so I could uh, build an SPC type match. Okay, well, uh, well, I hope you found that interesting or informative or both. And uh, as always, uh, thanks for watching, and um, I'll uh, I'll catch you next time.